Good morning. This is Deaconess Tammy Key with your good news. Today, my good news is titled, What's Your Obsession? Father in heaven, we give you thanks for your grace and your mercy. Father God, we know that your grace and mercy are new every morning. And so, Father God, we thank you for allowing us another day to be in the land of the living. We thank you for another opportunity to come boldly before your throne of grace. And so, Father God, I ask that this word encourages someone as it has encouraged me. And so may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The other day, I was getting ready for work. And I noticed that every morning I get up, I go into the bathroom, and the first thing I do is grab the scale. And I said to myself, you are so obsessed with your weight. And then all of a sudden, it was, this came into my head, and it said, I should be this obsessed with God. The dictionary defined definition of obsession is the state of being obsessed with someone or something, an idea or thought that continually preoccupies or intrudes on a person's mind. So when we are obsessed with Jesus as followers, we should be completely obsessed with Jesus. Mark 12 and 30, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. If we are obsessed with Jesus, we should give freely and openly because God loves a cheerful giver. When was the last time you blessed a brother or a sister because God laid that person on your heart? Obsessed believers who are obsessed, obsessed with God are known as givers, not takers. Obsessed believers genuinely think that others matter as much as they do. And they are particularly aware of those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Obsessed believers should not care about having food on the table, clothes on our back, or shoes on our feet. Because he said he would supply our needs according to his riches and glory. Obsessed believers do not struggle with forgiveness. He told us in Matthew 6, 14 and 15, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Obsessed believers are more concerned with obeying God than doing what is expected or fulfilling the status quo. A person who is obsessed with Jesus will do the things that they don't always, that doesn't always make sense in terms of success, wealth, or whatever it, it may be. Obsessed believers with Jesus do not consider service a burden. Obsessed people take joy in loving God by loving his people. John 15 and 8, by this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so he will be my disciple. Obsessed believers will have an intimate relationship with God. They are nourished by God's word throughout the day because they know the message that they heard in Sunday service will not be enough to sustain them throughout the week. It may help us, but it's not going to sustain us. What will sustain us is the word. A person who is, is obsessed with Jesus is more concerned with his or her character than their comfort. Obsessed people know that true joy doesn't depend on our circumstance or our environment. It is a gift that must be chosen and cultivated, a gift that ultimately comes from God. James 12 excuse me, James 1, 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into dire temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. He said he will keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds on him. 
An obsessed believer keeps their mind on him. And this is done by having a prayer life and by studying as well as meditating on his word. Make Jesus your obsession. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and from evermore. This is the good news.